I think I'd make like a really good plankton. <laughs> that would be fun. Yeah, just like a little plankton that lives on a farm, which doesn't really exist, but I guess it may be good. <laughs> Hold on a second, we've not got to that bit. Let's start all the way at the very beginning. And we need to welcome you to Stream It. This is the film and TV podcast full of things for you to watch. My name is Connor. Hello, hello. And this week's episode, we are carrying on with the chicken theme because this week we are chatting to the creators of Coop Troop. Yeah, so fun. Alex and Colin. Plus, I have some other chicken films for you. Yeah, there's quite a few chicken films, actually. I definitely discovered that. I've done my research. Is that a chicken noise? I don't know. Anyway, here's my speedy rundown of what's coming up. I got chatting and drawing, yes, with Alex and Colin from Coop Troop over on ITVX, who told me all about this crazy TV show and taught me how to draw Joe the Mysterious Egg. I also have three farmyard chicken-related TV shows, films, and even a game in there too. Seriously, if you thought a previous episode of Stream is a bit nonsense, this is definitely, well, the crown of all nonsense. I also have uh, Pete from Mega Mag, my good friend. He is here giving us some gaming expertise uh, to really dive into. So let's get going. Grab that popcorn of yours. Get yourself comfy. This is Fun Kids Stream It. Okay. So have you heard of Coop Troop? Maggie speaking, how can I help? We'll be there in four minutes. <laughs> oh, I've an idea. Great stuff. Here's what we're going to do. Yes, 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 yes. Hang on. Oh, <laughs> oh that was close. Oh. Oh. Sitting here, having a well-earned snack. I bet you didn't even appreciate the hint of lemon zest. Hmm. This unlikely group of four farm heroes and an egg, because, yep, there needs to be an egg there too, are called to help rescue other animals from danger and crazy situations. They end up going on mad adventures, and most of the time they really just make the situations... Loads worse. Sounds like me and my friends. I got chatting to Alex and Colin, who are co-creators of Coop Troop, to ask them about the bonkers, I think that's the right word, definitely, yeah, the bonkers show. Hello to Colin Williams, creative director, Alex T. Smith, co-creator, author and illustrator of Coop Troop. Hello, gentlemen. Hiya. How are you? Hiya. How are we? We are sticking out, as we say here in Northern Ireland, which means pretty good. Pretty okay. Yeah, Great. Okay. Alex, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Yeah, all good here. Okay, great. Well, it's good that you are both good. I'm I'm okay, but I'm also a little bit, you know, because basically we're going to have a little chat, but whilst we chat about Coop Troop, Alex, you're going to talk us through how to draw one of the fantastic characters, correct? Yeah, that's right. I thought we could have a go at drawing Joe, who is the very mysterious egg character. He's He's got eyes peeping through his shell and two little legs and shoes on, and he's the master of disguise in the programme. So at any given moment, he seems to just have like a endless wardrobe of dressing up costumes that he puts on um, for any reason, isn't it really, Colin? It's any reason he has the opportunity to do it. He'll just do he, it. So I'm going to draw him today. Absolutely, yeah. He, he, he just, he just he loves to delve into his wardrobe. Okay, well, I'm very, very excited about it. So if you are listening along at home right now, listening to stream it, I'd like you to just quickly run, grab yourself a pen, pencil, probably pencil, Alex, pencil, correct? Anything anything that yeah makes paper marks on paper is great, yeah. Okay, grab yourself some paper because while we have a little chat, you can also draw along at home as well. I'm going to do it. And uh, yeah, I'm already a little bit nervous because I'm not great at drawing. So uh, good luck, Alex. So <laughs> Alex, if you can start us off and uh, why you do that as well... Um, Colin, I'd like to ask you what inspired the hero gang and what's the origin of the story, Coop Troop? Maybe you can let us know all about that while we start the drawing. Well, Alex and myself were working on a show, on, on the previous show that we made, um, which was called Claude, which aired on Disney Junior. And Claude is, is based on Alex's um, really successful uh, book series of the same name, Claude. And during that time, we thought, oh, you know... There are these kind of shows out there that we kind of think are just okay. How can we create a better version of that, but with something which is really, really funny? And we, we thought, let's create let's create a slapstick comedy series. And we thought, okay, well, we want a gang. And what kind of gang? So we thought, not for very, very long, but we thought, 
What's the funniest gang show that we remember watching when we were kind of younger? And of course it was the A-Team. Um, you know, a bunch of kind of hapless um, guys who come together, who are all different, who go out to help to kind of, you know, help other people in, you know, in trouble. So the A-Team was our inspiration for the Coop Trip. Okay, very good inspiration for the Coop Troop. I like that. While you was telling us loads of great information about the Coop Troop, Alex drew a very, very quick, wonderful Joe, and I'm just about finishing the eyes. Alex, quickly, <laughs> can you can you just quickly talk us through what we need to do first? Because it's basically a great big egg to start, correct? Yeah, it could. It really couldn't be easier. So what you do is just on the middle of your paper, you draw like a great big zero shape because that's really what an egg is. And then anyway, you like sort of, probably just above halfway up maybe you draw two circles for his eyes um but you need to make sure there's lots of black around them or um darkness around them because the eyes are coming from inside the shell because he's always looking out from inside and in fact we never really reveal what type of animal he is inside so he could be anything that kind of comes in an egg so we don't know so once you've done that you go right down to the bottom of his shell and then you draw his two legs. And that, that couldn't be easy because you just draw the number 11 twice and that makes his legs. And then you draw sort of two sausage shapes at the bottom of those legs and colour those in for his shoes. And you can put a little cheeky heel on if you want, like just a little heel. And then you draw the bows on top of his shoes. Now, the easiest way to do that, I always find, is just to draw a love heart because it makes it look like a, a pe- like the shoes are done up. And then Joe is often so surprised that his eyebrows jump right up off the top of his head. So right above his head there, you do two little uh, sort of semicircle shapes, really, I suppose. And that really is it. And then what's really nice about Joe is, like we were saying, he's got this um, this endless wardrobe of costumes. Is This is just the basic Joe, but you can customise him any way you want. He's quite fond of a moustache in the show. He wears those quite a lot. But any type of costume you can you can put on there. So that's your basic Joe. And then a really good thing to do after that is just dress him up in whatever you want. Hats, uh, accessories, uh, bow ties, moustaches, anything like that. Eyelashes, you can do whatever you want. So there we go. Does he uh, does he have a mouth at all? He doesn't. No, we, we hear we hear him sort of talk absolute nonsense. And the only person in the show who can really understand him is the chicken called Flo. But it's it's sort of like on those old TV shows where you hear someone talking down the end of a phone and it just sounds like a weird noises. That's how he speaks. But it also sounds like a little bit echoey because it's coming from inside the shell. So, yeah. OK, well, I've completed mine um, and. I just added because you said that he could have some eyelashes and uh, a little mustache. So yeah. that I have done. How, how's how's that looking? Absolutely perfect. There oh, we go. Okay. So uh, hopefully at home, if you've been drawing along as well, you've also created weird Ed- Eggman with eyes and a mustache. Yeah. There we go. It's what we do on Stream It. Uh, Colin, really great to hear as well about kind of the, uh, you know, the influence on Coop Troop. It really is super special. Was it something that you found at first kind of quite difficult to overcome how to create it into such a, you know, incredible kind of animated series? Or did you find it just clicked, that idea and the animation, it just clicked straight away? I think really, you know, at the heart of anything, you know, it doesn't matter how good it looks. um, It's always about the idea. It's always about the, it's always about the characters, you know, and, and we so 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 we started. We actually we started off, um, and they were all chickens because Alex Alex you had just um, adopted a lot of rescue chickens at the time. That's right. Yeah, I've got a flock of unruly hens at my house. <laughs> the inspiration for the show. But we but we kind of thought that you know if they're all chickens, you know how do you kind of tell them apart because they're all chickens? Um, so we thought, well, actually, who else would kind of live, you know, li- live there? Um, and I suppose in our heads, we very, very quickly created this whole backstory of the, these are, you know, a bunch of, fa- of farm animals who are bored, stupid, uh, of what we call the endless chomp, chomp, poop, which is literally <laughs> literally animals just eating and going through the daily rituals of what animals do all day. And they thought, oh, we're bored with this. We want a life on an adventure. We want excitement. We want to be, we want to be vigilante, you know, animals that help other animals with with with, with their problems. And so they they created um a they, they converted their uh, chicken coop into almost like a TARDIS. So when you go inside, it's a it's it's a huge space, you know, and, and that becomes a vehicle that they can they hop into and can z- zoom off. Um, when the farmer's not watching uh, to help the the kind of precious 
pampered pets of Annabelle with with whatever whimsical problems that they may have, and there are lots of whimsical problems. And the whole the whole thing with the Goop Trip is is they take is what 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 starts as a small problem turns into a massive big issue because they they make things worse. Uh, yeah. Do you know what here at here at Fun Kids and especially in Connor Land and Stream It Land, I absolutely love ridiculous nonsense. I'm really really into that. Okay, it makes it makes me very very happy. This is completely ridiculous. And also there was something that we skimmed over that is also ridiculous, and that's the fact that Alex owns a flock of hens. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, where, where do I where do I get a flock of hens? I'd love a flock well, of hens. Yeah, I've got. Well, I have four dogs who are actually being very quiet at the moment, and they were sort of slightly a bit the inspiration as well for the animals that the uh, the coop troop help, um, because my four dogs are very pampered. But yeah, in the bottom of my garden, I have a flock of hens who are just lunatics really they're absolutely bonkers so kind of we drew inspiration from that and the thing about the coot troop is all the members of them is that they're incredibly enthusiastic but they're not very good at their job yeah. so like colin was saying like any problem that they're faced with they do ultimately solve it but it's it's solved in the most ridiculous way you know there are so many easier ways for them to solve these problems but they always choose the more difficult route I think when you look at like the foundation and the kind of uh, story of what Coop Troop is, you look at the creation, you look at the fact that you took influence from a flock of hens. I think it's really important that however they deal with tasks, it must be ridiculous. They can't just do it simply. No, not at all. Uh, okay, so the little uh, will situation with the with the Coop or whatever. Well, what is that called again, Colin? Please remind us because it's a great name. The little what's right? You know the little thing that you said that they escape from the farm on. Have you got a name for that? Oh yes. Yeah. So, so so it's 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 flows. Um, so it's it's a, it's a regular uh, chicken coop which is um, which has been converted secretly behind the farmer's back into this um, transforming TARDIS come vehicle, which 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 they use to escape th- uh, from the farm. So so they, they the so they the, they live on a farm. And the farmer who who's always present, um, who's actually a bit a bit a bit thick, if if we're perfectly honest, you know, he never seems to see what they're up to. He never seems to see, you know, the 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 mayhem that they cause. And when they leave, they, they pull up a almost like a pop up cardboard cutout of the of the coop, so that the farmer doesn't realise that they've gone. You know, yeah, they, they, they go create mischief and come back, and he's none the wiser. It's just, it just really is just absolutely brilliant. It makes me laugh every time I think about it, every time I've watched it. It's just so good. Uh, uh, Colin, for anybody that hasn't watched it, anybody that hasn't sat down and given Coop Troop a go just yet, uh, you know, let's get them excited and just tell them about maybe a really, really fun adventure that the Coop Troop go on. Is there a standout one for you that you think is a good one? Oh, I think it's one of the, one of the, one of the first episodes we, we, we made where they, they get, called out um to the home of uh fred and frida the two go- the two the two fish um who live in in, in, in one of the houses because fred the time frida, fred and frida, fred and frida fish. so uh, good fred and frida ring ring the coop ring the the coop troop because their tank's dirty and they can't watch their the latest the latest episode of I was going to say Baywatch, but it's not called Baywatch because that would be copyright infringement and all the rest. But it, it's it's their kind of favorite show, which is a bit like Baywatch. So Coop Troop go, and their job is to clean the tank. That's it. But of course, in the process of cleaning the tank, they what happens? Of course, they manage to to flush them down the flush both Fred and Frida down the 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 the, the plug hole of, of or the the sink um hole. And they escape into the sewers, and they've got to they've got to bring on Cornelius, who's the who's the um, the alligator, the very posh alligator who lives in the sewers to help them, and it turns into absolute chaos. So something very very small turns into something absolutely massive, um, and we we loved that I suppose because yeah. it was it was the first episode where we explored the world underneath the sit underneath the town. And I suppose when we were thinking about making this, Alex myself thought, look, if we're ever going to make this series, we we wanted to look like a Pixar TV series. It's got to be that good. And it actually is. Yeah, yeah. you've definitely I, I can I, I've seen it, I've watched it, and I can absolutely 100 percent say you've achieved it. It's fantastic. I, I think that animation and and that world you know we're within that world at fun kids we talk so much about all of it there's so much of it out there obviously and sometimes it takes something that you watch to really really stand out and i think for me personally it's when an amazing animation is also linked with an amazing fun story that is easy to understand and i personally think that's what coop troop is it makes sense you have people in 
normal life that go and save people and help situations. You kind of also never expect it to be drawn into an amazing animation with wonderful rabbit and mischievous Eggmen. It's just the best. Oh, thanks, man. Thanks so much. Uh, Alex, just uh, sort of to, to finish off, um, we have obviously loads of kids across the UK that listen to us across our podcast, across the radio. Yeah. And uh, we always encourage them to follow their dreams. We always encourage them to to go for it. And, you know, you guys are definitely two people that they will definitely look up to. Uh, Alex, what would you say is a piece of advice for any sort of aspiring young film, TV enthusiasts, you know, drawers, animators? Yeah. How, how do you sort of go about creating a I career think, in that? Yeah, I th- well, I, I'm... I'm mainly an author and an illustrator and um, and I've been lucky enough to kind of work on uh, some TV stuff as well, which has been great. But I think the biggest thing is just, just to not give up um, on, on your dream. So as an illustrator, I constantly uh, am, am drawing. So I drew it all the time as a child. And I think there's an age you get to probably when you get to secondary school and you start thinking, Oh, I shouldn't do that. Or it's not cool to do that and things, but I just kept doing it. And it's, and it's about kind of, knowing in yourself what makes you like happy and what makes you feel really fulfilled and for me that's drawing and creating stories and working with people like Colin and the team um so just never give up just keep doing it and and be confident in it and you know we drew today and your picture of of Joe looks different to mine it would look different if Colin drew it but that doesn't mean that they're that's bad it just means that everyone's got their own style so be confident in your own style and and you know be confident in who you are I think that's the biggest advice I can give that's really great. And Colin, from you, anything that you would add to that as well, just from your sort of expertise and your 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 career? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we 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 talk to teenagers a lot, and even you know, you know, kids at, at primary schools as well about you know careers and you know and what you can do and what you can be. You know, and and so often you know, we find that maybe our parents would love us to be a banker or a lawyer or a dentist or a doctor because they're great jobs and they 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 pay great money, but. How fantastic would it be to spend all of your day, every day, doing stuff that you actually really, really love? You know, you know whether that's coming up with with ideas, whether that's you know bringing characters to life, whether that's writing stories, whether that's being an animator. You know, and and the truth is, these things, the, the, these aren't just pipe dreams. There's a huge industry where you can be those things, and if you're really good, you can get paid really, really well as well. So don't compromise. On your dreams, don't settle for second best. Follow, follow, follow your heart and do what 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 makes you what makes your heart burst with excitement every single day because life is too short not to. Absolutely, and that is that is exactly the sort of thing that I would say too. I think I think that's very very good advice. Um, and I I would like to just finish with uh, you just said there, follow your dreams, and uh, well, uh, my dream is to maybe be in Coop Troop. Um, so. Is there any way, you know, if there's like another series that you can make a Connor in Coop Troop? I, look, I've got a slightly big head, I know, but I, I think you could draw a fun Coop Troop member that's called Connor, couldn't you? Well, okay, so who who, who would your character be then? So I think my character <laughs> would, uh, I think my character would probably be closest to the rabbit because they, I think the rabbit is dressed cool. So no, no, if, it, if no, you, if, no, a new character. So so what is your character? Who 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 is your persona? Okay, so I like to overthink things, but I like to get things done. So it kind of contradicts itself because I'll take ages to think about doing it, but in the meantime, I'm doing stuff. Do you see what I'm trying to say? So I may be doing it wrong whilst also overthinking it, but I know that I'll get there in the end, but I'm doing it at the same time. So it's kind of a bit of a mess. I'm just trying to think what animal you'd be. I think that I, mm, what animal would I be? I think I'd make like a really good plankton. (laughs) That would be fun. Yeah, just like a little plankton that lives on a farm, which doesn't really exist, but I guess it maybe could. <laughs> I think that's a good place to start. How's I that one for you, Colin? You look a I, little I, bit concerned. I think that's a perfect pitch for season two. Yeah, great. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. Coop Troop season two. You might see Connor in it. Uh, Alex, Colin, thank you so much. It's been honestly so fun to talk to you and uh, congrats on it. It's one of my favourite series and I'm not just saying that. It really is. I think it's fantastic. So uh, thank you for delivering it to us. It's really special. Uh, Thanks for having us. Thank you so much. I hope you haven't had enough farmyard or chicken shows because I have three more uh, that you have to watch if you love Coop Troop. Plus a game two. First up, it's fantastic Mr. Fox. Who am I, Kylie? Why a fox? Why not a a horse or a beetle or a bald eagle? I'm saying this more as, like, existentialism, you know? I don't know what you're talking about, but it sounds illegal. Honey, I'm seven non-fox years old now. My father died at seven and a half. I don't want to live in a hole anymore. And I'm going to do something about it. 
don't buy this tree, Foxy. This is Bogus Bunts and Bean, three of the meanest, nastiest, ugliest farmers in this valley. You're moving into the most dangerous neighborhood for someone of your type of species. Your comments are valuable, but I'm going to ignore your advice. The cuss you are. Are you cussing with me? No, you cussing with me. Don't cuss and point. You're going to cuss with somebody. You're not going to. This epic movie follows Mr. Fox as he breaks into the farms of three farmers, Bogus, Bunce and Bean. He has to be crafty to outsmart the farmers, steal their food and protect his family. This movie is awesome and looks utterly crazy. Give it a watch over on Netflix. I think you'll really enjoy it. Up next, yeah, you know it's coming. You've got to watch the Shaun the Sheep movie, Farmageddon! (laughs) Shaun's back. But there's a new arrival in town. Lula. Who's a little alien. She's about to discover that our world is pretty sweet. When a mischievous alien crash lands near Mossy Bottom Farm, Sean sets on a thrilling rescue mission to help return her home, while a secret government UFO organisation is hot on their trail. Yeah, can Sean and the flock avert Farmageddon before it's too late? Well, you can go find out. Watch over on BBC iPlayer. And finally, here's a movie coming out next week. Yeah, you can look forward to it on Apple TV. The Velveteen Rabbit! I wonder who this one is for. Hello, Rabbit. Would you like to play with me? What does real mean? Being real isn't about how you're put together. When a child loves you with all of their heart, then you become real. The little rabbit toy is desperate to become real. He meets real rabbits and other animals, but only if the little boy who looks after him loves him enough. Will he become a real rabbit? Uh, well, maybe. This movie is based off a classic story, and it's really, really great that I'm sure your parents will know. It's the kind of movie you'll want to put on over at Christmas. It's arriving on Apple TV on the 22nd of November, so get it in your diaries. It's going to be good. And just because I'm feeling nice, I have a game for you to check out as well. Should we find out all about it? In a place far from the city noise, the best summer of my life begins. The simplest moments are filled with pure joy. And a new adventure awaits around every corner. Everdream Valley. Yeah, it was released this year. It's a farming adventure with a twist. I I really, really enjoy it, by the way. Uh, And I love a good farming game. I used to play Farming Simulator, but I do think this is maybe better. In the day, you look after your cute little farm and harvest your veg, feed your animals and all that. But at night, with a little bit of magic, you can take control of all the animals and bring some magical mayhem to the valley. Pretty cool, right? Definitely check it out on Switch, PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5, Xbox and PC. Right, well, wouldn't be streaming it without my good mate Pete giving us some gaming expertise. And I think he's got something rather exciting for us this week. Hey, Pete. How's it going, Khan? Yeah, it's really, really good, actually. Really good. We've been talking about some really fun topics recently, haven't we? Like, really good topics. Yeah, it's always good on this channel. I love coming to Fun Kids and talking about the things I love. Yeah, well, that's good. Well, we're going to be talking about the next thing that you love, uh, that I love too as well, and that is the strongest Super Smash Bros. characters. Love this. That's right, the top five. I absolutely love this game. I've been playing it for years, and I've broken it down into the five best characters which are going to give you a victory. Okay, so you've gone five best characters that are going to give you a victory as opposed to your favourite five, or do they kind of overlap? Yeah, yeah, the five most effective ones. Okay, great. Where do we start? All right, at number five, we've got the world's most famous Pokemon, Ash's best bud, it's Pikachu. Ah, of course it's Pikachu. Why is Pikachu so good in Smash Bros? So Pikachu, he's, you know what, He's not amazing at anything, but he's good at everything. So he's got strong shooting attacks. He's got strong close range attacks. He's speedy. He can jump really far. So Uh, whoever you're up against, whoever your mates pick to fight you, you've got a shot at taking advantage of their weaknesses. I've always, always hoped and wished that I had something in common with Pikachu. And finally, I had to, <laughs> he's, he's not amazing at anything, but he's kind of good at everything. So that's great. Yeah. Okay. And you can both shoot lightning bolts out your cheeks. Yeah, I, I can't do that, but uh, one can wish. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Pikachu then, one of the one of the top. So where would you put him? Fifth? He's in at number five. Yeah. He's in at number five. Okay. So really, really good as an overall.
overall doesn't really excel at anything particularly, but a good, like, solid one to have a fight with. Definitely, definitely. Okay, in at four? In at four, we've got Fox, a.k.a. Star Fox to some people. Oh, okay. I wouldn't have thought of you. I mean, I play this game so much. Okay, why so good? So he's just really, really hard to hit. He's, he's good at dodging. He's got a laser gun, which means you can't really get near him. And he's got this laser shield, which bounces all your shots back at you. So getting close to him to punch him is just really, really difficult. Oh, so you're actually almost in a way doing like um, double hits because not only are you doing what you do, you're also kind of counting what he's giving you, which then goes back to him. Exactly. Oh, okay. I like that. I like that. So Fox is good then. Yeah, yeah. He's tough. To, he's just tough to punch. Like His moves aren't the strongest, but he's going to hit you 10 times before you even hit him once. And who do you think would win out of uh, our number four and our number five at the moment? Uh, you know what? Because Pikachu loves shooting lightning bolts out his cheeks. Mm. Probably Fox because he's got that shield. He's just going to bounce more back at him. Yeah, he's got that shield. Okay, Fox in at four. We've got Pikachu in at five. Who's coming in at three? This is going to be tough at the top. In at number three, it's a bit of a lesser known character. It's Lucina, who's from the Fire Emblem games. Oh, I don't even I don't even know Lucina. God, yeah. She's a small character and I love this game as well. Why so good? So she's got two really important strengths. One, her sword does a ton of damage. And two, her jump move is really good. So even if you think you've knocked her off the stage, even if she's flying miles away, she's probably going to be able to get back on to the stage and when she does all it's going to take is one big hit from that sword and you are going to go flying okay so she has the sword and sometimes having that kind of like extra thing really does help in super smash bros so is the sword quite hard to like kind of defend against as well do you find yeah it's long you can't get close to it yeah. so you've got to you've got to really shoot if you want to beat lucina you don't want to get up close okay so she's in at three we've got three really good ones we've got pikachu at five we've got fox at four and we've got lucinda at three thanks so much p always great to chat and that's it if you enjoy the episode give us a follow so you don't miss future episodes and rate the podcast five stars too we're always looking for reviewers to come on the show and tell us their favorite films and why they love them and that could be you if you want to get involved with episodes in the future you can head over to funkidslife.com forward slash stream it send me a message telling me about your favorite movie and you never know you could be on and i'll see you soon bye